fruitful life. Thank you. Senator Harris. Thank you. Um, I want to echo the comments of my colleagues in thanking the men and women who serve in your agencies. I am uh, concerned that the political attacks against the men and women of your agencies may have had an effect on your ability to recruit, retain, and also the morale of your agencies. So I would like to emphasize the point that we all, I think, share in making, which is we thank the men and women of your agencies for their selfless work. They do it on behalf of the American people without any expectation of award or reward, and we cannot thank them enough for keeping us safe. Uh, Director Ray, Chairman Nunez's memo included sensitive FISA information regarding a person who worked on the President's campaign. According to the White House statement, the President was the one who authorized the memo's declassification. Do you believe there is an actual, or at least the appearance of a conflict of interest when the President is put in charge of declassifying information that could complicate an ongoing investigation into his own campaign? Well, Senator, uh, as we've been very clear what our view was about the disclosure uh, and accuracy of the memo in question, but I do think it's the President's role as Commander-in-Chief uh, under the rule uh, that was invoked to um, to object or not to the declassification. So I think that, you know, that is the President's responsibility. Regardless of whether there is an appearance or actual conflict of interest. Well, I, I leave it to others to characterize whether there's appearance or actual conflict of interest, but I, I think the President was fulfilling his responsibility in that situation. If the President asked you tomorrow to um, hand over to him additional sensitive FBI information on the investigations into his campaign, would you give it to him? Uh, I, I'm not going to discuss the uh, investigation uh, in question with the President, or much less provide information from that investigation to him. And if he wanted, if he received that information and then wanted to declassify it, would he have the ability to do that from your perspective? Information from the... However he received it, perhaps from members of the United States Congress. I think legally he would have that ability. And uh, do you believe the President should recuse himself from reviewing and declassifying sensitive FBI material related to this investigation? I think recusal questions are something I would encourage the President to talk to the White House Counsel about. And has the FBI done any kind of legal analysis on these questions? Uh, well, happily, I'm, I'm no longer in the business of doing legal analysis. Um, I, now get to be a, I now get to be a client uh, uh, and blame lawyers for things instead of being the lawyer who gets blamed. So uh, we have, have not done legal analysis. Have you blamed any lawyers for their analysis of this issue? What's that? Have you blamed any lawyers for their analysis of this I, I have not yet, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> Is the FBI getting the cooperation it needs from social media companies to counter foreign adversaries' influence on our elections? Uh, I think the cooperation has been improving. Um, I think we're continuing to uh, work with the social media companies to try to see how we can raise their awareness so that they can share information with us and vice versa. So I think that I think things are moving in the right direction, but uh, I think there's a lot of progress to be made. What more do you need from social media companies to improve the partnership that you'd like to have with them to counter these attacks? Uh, well, I mean, I think we, we always like to have more information shared more quickly from their end, but I think from their perspective, they're, you know, it's a, it's a dialogue. They're looking to get information from us about what it is uh, we see so that they can give responsive information. So I think we're working through those issues. Do you believe that the social media companies have enough employees uh, that have the appropriate security clearance to make these partnerships real? That's not an issue I've evaluated, but I'd happy to take a look at it. Please do and follow up with the committee. Uh, Director Coates, one of the things that makes guarding against foreign intelligence threats um, on social media so complex is that the threat 
originates overseas, and so that would be within the jurisdiction of the CIA and the NSA. And then it comes to our shores, and then it passes on to the FBI and also the social media companies themselves. I'm not aware of any written IC strategy on how we would confront the threat to the social media. Does such a strategy exist in writing? I would have to get back with you on that. Uh, I'd be happy to look into it uh, from my perspective right now. A written strategy, specific strategy, is not in place, but I want to check on that. <clears throat> okay, please do follow up. And uh, also, last year, Congress passed a bipartisan Russia sanctions bill. Um, however, the administration has not imposed those sanctions. From an intelligence perspective, what is your assessment of how Russia interprets the administration's inaction? I don't have information uh, relative to what the Russian thinking is in terms of that particular specific uh, reaction. There are other sanctions, as you know, that are being imposed on Russian oligarchs and others uh, uh, through the United Nations and through other things that, that have been done um, uh, right, uh, in reference to uh, the JICPOA. Uh, but specifically on, on your question, I don't have an answer for that. Senator Can Harris, you provide? Yes. May I just, may I just comment? It's, it, it, I think. I think it's. Um, I think we ought to look at that in a broader context. That is how the Russians view all of the actions of this administration, not just uh, a particular set of sanctions or the absence thereof. So uh, as we've watched the Russians respond to this administration's decision to provide defensive weapons in Ukraine to push back against Russian efforts in Syria. Uh, sanctions placed on Venezuela were directly in conflict with Russian interests. The list. I've had no conversations with Mr. Moore. I've, I've been out, out of the country I've for just, the last nine just, days. And I have, had have, an have any of you had, because if you've not had questions. questions I ask you. that you uh, stop so we can conduct this hearing the way we have planned it. Uh, maybe it isn't going exactly the way that the minority would like to have it go, but we, we have said for a long period of time that we were going to proceed on this very day, and I think we ought to give the American people the opportunity to hear whether Judge Kavanaugh should be on the Supreme Court or not, and uh, you have heard my side of the aisle call for regular order, and I think we ought to proceed in regular order. There will be plenty of opportunities to respond to the questions that the minority is legit leg legitimately raising, and we will, uh, we will proceed accordingly. Judge, have you ever discussed Special Counsel Mueller or his investigation with anyone? Well, it's uh, in the news every day. I... Have you discussed it with anyone? Uh, with other judges, I know. Uh... Have you discussed Mueller or his investigation with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres, the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, President Trump's personal lawyer? Uh... Be sure about your answer, sir. Um, well... I'm not remembering, but if you have something you want to. Are you certain you've not had a conversation with I, anyone at that law firm? Kasowitz, Benson. Kasowitz, Benson, and yeah. Torres, which is the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, yeah. who is President Trump's personal lawyer. Are you, have you had any conversation about Robert Mark?